Hello, I'm Dr. Clark Chang from Keratoconus and Specialty Contact Lens Services inside of the cornea department here at Wells Eye Hospital. Often I get asked questions by patients and also my colleagues on how best to manage patients who are diagnosed with keratoconus. So today I would like to take this opportunity to give a general overview of this eye condition called keratoconus and as well as to introduce some of the new medical advancements in keratoconus treatments, including specialty contact lenses, which are really some of the most important medical tools we have in helping our keratoconus patients obtain their best possible vision, whether it's before or after a patient undergoes a surgical eye procedure. So let's talk for a moment about the basics of your vision before we get into discussing the actual condition itself. Like the old adage that compares the workings of a camera to our eyes, our human optics do share some similarity with that of a camera. So in a simplified form, think of your retina in the back portion of your eye as the film inside of a camera. And the lens system of a camera or focusing mechanism in a camera is very similar to your cornea, which is the very outer front portion and transparent portion of the eye. There's also a magnifier-like lens structure inside of your eye that shares similar function as your cornea in terms of giving it power. So together, these two elements control the proper projection of images from the physical world onto your retina in the back of the eye going through your cornea. And your cornea provides the most amount of the focusing power of this in this camera analogy. And its natural smooth contour of your cornea determines how much power it has to give. So how is that related to keratoconus, you may ask? And that is a great question. So keratoconus is a degenerative and bilateral corneal disorder, which means that this condition can be progressive or very unstable through many years of one's life until the progression slows down, and it typically affects both eyes, uh, although one eye tends to be much worse than the other. And remember, I just talked about the smooth contour of the cornea on the outside that determines the focusing power an eye gets, uh, majority of its power. So when this tissue, your corneal tissue, weakens um, by a disease like keratoconus, as it starts to develop, this corneal tissue now no longer is able to hold its original shape and start to bulge forward in various ways depending on other individual and biological characteristics. And eventually, this cornea will assume a conical or a cone-like shape. And this new misshapen corneal contour does not allow the proper projection of images onto the back of the eye, which is your retina. And this means that the visual signals, much like your cell phone in a city, um, gets very poor quality when it uh, gets to your retina and very poor quality visual signals is transferred to the visual cortex inside of your brain and leads to processing errors, if you would, quote unquote. Um, and that can be very bothersome and very confusing. So to put it simply, think of it as going to a 3D movie theater, watching a 3D movie, and you didn't get the 3D glasses to put on. So patients complain about seeing multiple out of focus images that are always blurry, no matter how hard or how long they try to stare in an object, which makes it very tiring for them and very difficult to distinguish and localize an object in space. Um, and as well, keratoconus patients also experience very bothersome glare and halo because there's so many light that is going into the back that's not focused, making patients feel very uneasy and very unsafe when driving at night or go out on a very sunny day. So many of these patients discontinue driving activities or try to avoid going out when it's sunny outside. And these are just some of the examples of the challenges of living with keratoconus condition, doesn't even cover all. And keratoconus was previously thought to occur potentially one in every 2,000 individuals. But there has recently been reported by a study from the Netherlands that it could be as high as one in every 375. Um, that's a big contrast, a big difference. So whether it's because we now have more sensitive clinical tests that we can perform or just that doctors are more aware of this condition, it certainly appears that we continue to learn about this disease and that keratoconus is not as rare as we used to think. 
And because of its degenerative, degenerative eye condition, it's important to discuss how we can stabilize this disease. Now, FDA approved a medical procedure called corneal cross-linking in April 2016 for treating patients with progressive keratoconus. So it basically uses an eye drop called riboflavin. Think of it as very similar to vitamin B and also plus an ultralight, ultraviolet light, UV light, that makes the together makes the corneal tissue stronger, which then stabilizes the condition and enable your cornea to better hold its shape. So we now offer this treatment in uh, cornea services at uh, Wales Eye Hospital and be happy to work with you in assessing your individual risk profile uh, and whether or not the treatment procedure is needed. Now, in, order, uh, in addition to stabilizing keratoconus condition, this procedure, corneal cross-linking, has also been reported in medical literature to bring about some improvement to the corneal contour that we were talking about, so it's not as bulgy, if you would. Now, although doctors are very happy to see this result, it, this improvement typically is not sufficient to uh, achieve the visual improvement that is needed to function in daily life for majority of our keratoconus patients. And this is where specialty contact lenses really shines. By being able to control a shape of a polymer material that we make into a specialty contact lens, we're able to use the customized outer shape of these lenses to have you put the lens on the eye and basically cover up or mask the misshapen contour of the cornea. And this is almost like rebuilding the shape of your cornea on the outside without performing a corneal transplant. And I know what you're thinking. Every time I say contact lenses, most people think, oh, soft disposable lenses that I see on TV, but I've tried and it doesn't help. Well, unlike soft disposable lenses, these specialty lenses are created using material that are less flexible so that the shape of the material can be kept constant and stable throughout the entire day. So continue to allow a patient viewing through these specialty lenses to enjoy properly and best focus image that goes on to the back of the eye, which is your retina, and makes it possible then to give you the best quality of life. So most patients think that special specialty lenses on the sort of flip side, if they're not thinking it's soft disposable lenses, they are usually thinking, oh, it's the hard lenses that I've heard and they're very uncomfortable and I can't wear them. Well, what patients don't realize is that there has have been many advancements made in these specialty lenses. And we offer lenses at Will's Eye ranging from the uh, corneal gas permeable lenses um, that you are thinking of, which think of it as the modern version of the modern improved version of the heart lenses. And also in addition to that, soft keratoconus hydrogel lenses, hybrid lenses that has uh, soft and hard combined together, as well as a scleral lens. So each of these lens design have their own advantages and really need to be properly matched to the unique profile in each patient. And once the initial fitting is done, uh, the lenses will be custom made for you, and it, all, it can then go on and take several, a series of several visits to make further individualized modifications onto the lenses, so when you come back or when patients come back to clinic to see me. And this is very similar to being monitored after any type of eye surgery. And so most patients are really unaware that further improvement can be made after they've been given the first set of lenses, and therefore they often think they either get used to it or they don't, and when they don't, they just think that it's their fault and they're not a good candidate for these specialty lenses, which is not true. And this is why at Will's Eye, we offer you this, we offer our specialty lens services on a slightly different care delivery model where we will work with each patient throughout series of the visits that are required to make sure that you, they are getting the most out of these prescribed specialty lenses that are customized for their condition and for their eyes. It may turn out to be a time-consuming process, but it has a very rewarding endpoint um, for both myself as the doctor as well as my patients in terms of seeing the improvement to the quality of their life, whether it's just using specialty contact lenses by it or themselves, or combining with a surgery that uh, we may elect to have patients undergo. And once again, I'm Dr. Clark Chang from the keratoconus and specialty contact lens services here inside of our corneal department at Will's Eye Hospital.